All right, guys, welcome. We're going to do a relatively short video here on the unification of Italy. Back in the day, Italy was not a unified country as it is today. You have uh, a bunch of separate kingdoms. For example, Sardinia, which includes this island, Lombardy, Venice, or Venetia, uh, the Papal States, controlled by the Pope, Sicily here, Naples, this is the kingdom of the two Sicilies, Tuscany, all these are separate political units, separate countries acting independently. There was a movement uh, associated with nationalism of all the people in the Italian peninsula to unite Italy to one country. A key figure in this unification was a guy named Giuseppe Garibaldi. Those of you that recognize the term Garibaldi, that's the state fish of California. It was named after the color that Garibaldi's followers wore. It's obviously a black and white uh, photograph, but Garibaldi here is wearing an orange shirt, and all of his followers were known for this. It's roughly the same color as the Garibaldi goldfish. And When the Garibaldi goldfish was discovered, it's probably an Italian naturalist who named that goldfish after this Italian nationalist hero. So he was a revolutionary hero. His job was a professional revolutionary. He was born in 1807, started to uh, the revolutionary movement as a young man in 1833. He was ordered to seize a warship, which is like a naval warship. I don't know what they were thinking, but this plot was discovered. He was arrested and condemned to death. But he escaped uh, and lived in South America for 12 years. This is where he really became a revolutionary, where he understood the process and kind of the how. It's kind of where he be, uh, really learned his trade as a revolutionary. He displayed unusual characteristics of a military leader. He participated in revolts. All these South American countries were revolting against Spain and Brazil. And Garibaldi helped in that and became very popular. He then moved in 1848 to the United States, settled in Staten Island, New York, of all places, became a United States citizen. However, this did not last. Within a year, he returned to Italy and again joined another unification movement uh, known, again, this is Italian, Risorgimento, okay, known for uh, the revival, revival. He organizes a corps of volunteers, almost his own private army. They s align themselves with the Pied Piedmont ease ruler named Charles Albert. He was the king of Sardinia. And they were, they went to war, uh, Garibaldi's followers went to war against the Austrians, of all people, up in northern Italy. These were the people that Napoleon originally beat when Napoleon uh, first became a general. After Napoleon's defeat, the Austrians came back. But he did not win. He was unsuccessful. So he then went down to Rome and tried to get the French out of Rome. Uh, this is, again, a leftover of Napoleon's time. Uh, the French had taken over Rome and had been there the last 50 years. So he defended Rome. Initially pretty successful, but in the end, the French forced him to basically, they kind of fought a stalemate, forced him to settle. And they worked out a deal where Garibaldi and his forces were allowed to retreat out of Rome. However, the Austrians were sitting there waiting for them. And as soon as they got out of French territory, the Austrians fell upon Garibaldi's troops and slaughtered, killed, uh, you know, arrested everybody. And Garibaldi himself fled for Italy a second time. Here again, you could see the orange shirts that him and his followers wore. So he returns to Italy now in 1854. This whole odyssey, I think, started in 1826. Uh, uh, he settled down on the island of Caprera. He was still very, very popular. This time he aligned himself, and I would write this in your notes, with the Victor Emmanuel II, King of Sardinia, and his prime minister, a guy named Cavour. That is the, the people that Garibaldi threw his influence behind. He wanted Victor Emmanuel to become the king of Italy, not just the king of Sardinia. Garibaldi was still extremely popular. He had a big following, and most of his followers, the people influenced by him, lent their uh, alliance to Victor Emmanuel II as well. He finally, in 1859, gets his forces together, and they go up against the Austrians again, and this time they win and force the Austrians out of northern Italy. He then gets on a boat goes to Sicily, which is the island that the boot is kicking, and he conquers Sicily. He goes across to the boot itself of, of Italy, and he conquers Naples. He gives all that territory to Victor Emmanuel and retires. And that's it. That's all we hear from Garibaldi. Now, uh, in 1861, following this kind of united territory, Sardinia, Lombardy, Sicily, Naples, 
couple other small states, uh, Umbria and the Marches come over uh, from the papal government and become part of United Italy. So finally, Italy itself is kind of established in 1861. Victor Emmanuel is the king of Italy. They still have a couple important pieces missing, notably uh, the papal states and Venice. But here is Garibaldi. He, he, this is where Victor Emmanuel II is from. They went up here. They conquered this territory from the Austrians. They went down to Sicily, conquered Sicily. They went over here to Naples, conquered all this territory, and left. Now, Rome was left over. Venice was left over as well. And they come over into the Italian uh, gains in 1866, about five years later. Venice uh, comes in, the Prussians uh, defeat Austria and Italy. Uh, you know, uh, Italy sides with the Prussians, and Venice is the reward for their victory. And then uh, four years after that, in 1870, the Prussians are fighting the French, who still have control over uh, Rome, these papal states. The French leave, and Rome uh, then comes in to United Italy. And in 1871, finally, uh, we have what is more or less modern-day Italy with Rome as its capital.